Uh, we have some news breaking recently. Uh, this is a Higher Truth production, by the way. But we have some breaking news. The cosmic rays have reached a record high as solar activity nears space age low. Uh, this is an article I'm going to critique from Electroverse. And and it, it, it's so telling in so many different ways just to read one through one of these articles because once you read one, you've read them all, basically, because there's so much being redacted and left out, ignored, um, and they're repeating very basic, very, very basic uh, uh, principles and theories. But the galactic cosmic rays, they tell you, are a mixture of high-energy photons, which are like beams, and subatomic particles accelerated towards Earth by supernova explosions. So right off the bat, Electroverse gave you and reported a false statement. There is no supernova explosions. I mean, they use more than one explosion. Uh, I guess they're all just pointed at Earth. But... Nozomi, the Pamela experiment, and other satellites have confirmed that these high cosmic ray densities that we're seeing, they're higher than normal, uh, are not the result of a supernova explosion because they're lacking in the appropriate ratios and energies that a supernova should be possessing. Uh, there's a lot of neutral particles, uh, neutral helium especially, but even neutral hydrogen. And and you don't have anything neutral in a supernova explosion. Everything's ionized um, and high energy. And so, but it's just amazing. So galactic cosmic rays are a mixture of high energy photons and subatomic particles accelerated toward Earth by supernova explosions and other violent events in the cosmos. So you tell me what other violent events in the cosmos can create cosmic rays and the only thing I can know of is either CME from another sun it's pretty violent or a collision that I mean what other violent things are you talking about in our solar system because these are being detected on earth so it goes on to read solar cosmic rays are effectively the same thing though their source is the sun well, most of the stuff coming off the sun is not neutral, so they're not the same thing. Spaceweather.com and the students of Earth to Sky Calculus, is the name of a group, Earth to Sky Calculus, have been launching cosmic ray balloons almost weekly now since March of 2015. Their results reveal atmospheric radiation has reached recent highs just as solar activity is approaching a space age low. Okay, now everything that, you know, is a conclusion is wrong, is actually um, upside down. Okay, atmospheric radiation has reached a record high just as solar activity is approaching a space age low. Solar activity is, if they're talking about CMEs, it's a true statement. But when you say solar activity is a space age low, you make it like the sun's cooling. When it's not, the sun's hotter than it's ever been in our lifetimes. Solar activity is approaching a space age low. So, and how do we know? The ultraviolet index. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a fifth grader and you learn that the ultraviolet index, ultraviolet causing cancer and, and skin damage and, and can burn trees and bleach coral, you, our index used to go up to 2000, let's see, up until 2004, it used to go up to 10. 10 meaning very high, very high ultraviolet. Okay, and then 2004, what happened? They incre increased the upper limit of the measurement of the graph of the scale, okay? And they added an 11, okay? And it wasn't just an 11, it was an 11 and up, they added, and it stood for extreme. So any fifth grader who hears that they had to raise the UV index is going to ask, well, What's wrong with the sun? It's at 11 year low. It's at the grand solar minimum. How in the world can the UV index all of a sudden 
go above very high to extreme. And then you factor in that some places on Earth are currently reading a UV index of 17 on a scale that once went to 10. OMG, said the fifth grader. What's wrong with the sun? Does that sound like a space age low to you? Of course it doesn't. So this is how the sun's, how it gets characterized and how and why there's so much misunderstanding and disbelief upon, upon my solar minimum, grand solar minimum colleagues. The article goes on to say, during solar minimums, the low point of an 11-year or so cycle, the sun's magnetic field weakens. That's not true. The sun's magnetic field doesn't weaken. The sun's magnetic field is caused by its spin of hot plasma. And that is the sun's magnetic field. What's weaker is the magnetic fields on the surface of the sun created by sunspots. Those are weaker. But I don't know why they even go there because they're talking about cosmic rays and how the sun can keep out cosmic rays. But here we are, weak magnetics, weaker. But yet the outward pressure of the solar wind decreases. The outward pressure of the solar wind decreases because of the lack of coronal mass ejections. This allows more cosmic rays to penetrate the inner solar system as well as our planet's atmosphere. There's a true statement. So then, the question becomes, it really does, is if this happens all the time, then what the heck is different about the solar minimum where we see an exponential increase in solar energy. We see UV, ultraviolet, going through the ceiling. We see ultraviolet C and ultraviolet B increasing as well. Those are more powerful forms of ultraviolet. We see 813 nanometer radiation actually accelerated in a exponential increase. We see iron almost looking like it wants to exponentially increase. We see 30 nanometer increasing. We see some visible light increasing. We see infrared increasing. And we see some decreases coming off the sun, x-rays coming off the sun. So, so we have a 20% increase in cosmic radiation or cosmic rays. So that means the number of particles. So now I'm going to read the, the implications because the implications from Electroverse is really what we need to know. It's what I need to know. It's what you need to know. What we got to expect. What are the implications of record all-time space age high in terms of cosmic rays coming from somewhere else in the solar system? How is that? How can that be? Well, here are the implications. And I'm and this is the most important part of this article. When cosmic rays hit the top of the Earth's atmosphere, because they're particles, they re produce a spray of secondary particles upon collision and photons upon collision that these rain down upon the Earth's surface, which is mostly ocean. This is what the team's balloons measure the secondary spray is what is being measured. The subatomic particles, not so much the primary cosmic rays, but the secondaries that occur after the collision they fail to mention. This type of radiation, which you can also find in medical x-ray machines at airport security scanners, has increased more than 20% in this stratosphere, according to spaceweather.com data. Spaceweather.com data are you kidding me? Spaceweather.com should be upset that you threw their name in to that paragraph. First of all, it, 
subatomic particles are not x-rays. Subatomic particles are thought of as being gamma radiation. And when you get a medical x-ray, that's usually generated by an electron event in the machine. And so we're not just talking electrons, we're talking what? We're talking positrons that annihilate with electrons. We're talking neutrons, which rapidly decay in a second or two and produce incredible amounts of photon radiation. How much? Twice as much as radioactive uranium. So when you say that, you know, I mean, this whole is so, this whole sentence is so misleading. This type of radiation, the, the secondary spray, which is gamma, which you can also find in medical x-ray machines and airport security scanners. I really, I mean, do you find gamma radiation in your x-ray machine? I'd like to know if you have some neutrons in there that are decaying, positrons annihilating with electrons. I want to know that. And I doubt that's what's going on. So it's crazy. And it has increased by 20%. Listen, if the particles increase by 20% and half of those are neutrons, let's say then only 10% uh, uh, of the increase is represented as neutrons. Neutrons carry twice the radiation value as uranium. And therefore, the, 20, the 10% is 20%. Uh, increase in radiation and if let's say for example that the 20 percent increase in particles were all neutrons it, it would actually represent a 40 percent increase in the total amount of photon radiation so but the, they're saying the particles the number the number of particles have increased by 20 percent in the stratosphere and some of those are neutrons which carry a double value so you're looking at a total atmospheric or stratospheric increase in total radiation but minimum 30 percent probably um, minimum 30 percent increase in photon radiation and but so but yet you know spaceweather.com does not say those secondary particles are found in x-ray machines I'm sorry Cosmic rays, they say, penetrate commercial jets. Well, that's what gamma radiation does. Go through the metal skin of a jet, delivering whole body dosages equal to one or more dental x-rays, even on regular flights across the USA. Hold on a little minute. Hold on. One or more dental x-rays well how many dental x-rays did you get when you flew from the east coast to the west coast well you got one or more what is the top value i would be asking uh or more is what's concerning okay i'll consent to a single dental x-ray on a flight but or more or more what and since we're not talking about really just x-rays, we're talking about gamma radiation, how does that even translate into a dental x-ray? Because dental x-rays do not use neutrons. They do not use subatomic particles unless you're talking electrons. Cosmic rays pose an even greater hazard to astronauts, of course. Clouds on Earth our sunshade, they're quoting now Dr. Roy Spencer, he's probably from the balloon people but clouds on earth is sunshade, no kidding What? it's funny how when they use the word sun they combine it with another word, sunshade they really don't want you talking about the sun unless it's about how low the sunspots are so Dr. Roy Spencer writes, clouds are Earth's sunshade. And the fifth grader s- sat up and said, no kidding. And if the sa- cloud cover, listen to this, if the cloud cover changes for any reason, you have global warming or global cooling. Well, which one is it? Am I getting sicker or am I getting better? What's the implications? Well, basically they're saying the implications are, well, we can't tell you the implications because it could get warmer or it could get cooler and the earth's clouds 
um, are important. They play a huge role in climate, but in terms of heating the oceans, uh, the cloud cover is not as significant of a factor because the clouds are created by evaporation from the ocean. So if you have more evaporation, you have more clouds. So that's a hot ocean that's creating those clouds too. The upshot of this current solar minimum, the sun's deepest in the past hundred years, says NASA, is quote, and here's, this is what they did, this is what they did, cooling of the planet. So you go to implications, and they say, well, the implications are you're just getting a dentist x-ray. That's all. The astronauts are getting more dental x-rays. They don't use the word gamma radiation. They don't use the word neutrons. And now that there's an all-time high, then you're talking an all-time high of gamma radiation. The most harmful form of photon energy is the gamma radiation. And some may argue that extreme ultraviolet can be pretty harmful too, and that is correct. But the upshot of this current solar minimum, I don't know, what is the upshot, good or bad? The sun's deepest in the past is a cooling of the planet. Look it, we have an entire article, and one of the only phrases in the entire article is put into bold letters. Why do they do that? So they put seed clouds and cooling planet in the implications. The implications are <laughs> seeded clouds and cooling the planet. With the next coming, the solar cycle forecast by NASA, quote unquote, they underline it, the weakest of the past 200 years. Um, I think they said the deepest, not the weakest. But that's that whole I mean everything about the implications paragraphs are pathetic reporting pathetic science and dangerous because they got you seeing a cooling planet and not what's actually happening today and I always say that people who say we're getting cold or we're going to be cooling the planet they're leading with their chin they really are because they're they're talking about how the planet's going to get colder and I got news for you we're in solar minimum and as we're in this grand solar minimum we're smack dab we're in the middle of it right now we have record fires that are burning more acres than ever before we have record ice melts for the, this past summer. Even Antarctica lost a record amount of ice. And usually Antarctica is kind of resistant. So this is Im incredible what the heat is. A UV index of 17. Does that sound like the weakest sun in 200 years? A UV index of 17 when the scale only used to go to 10. Does that sound like the weakest sun? So people who are reporting on this are misleading you. And it's not even NASA. They quote bits and pieces of NASA and then throw in their own commentary. Their own conclusions, their own predictions, their own theory. But unfortunately, since that theory is getting repeated over and over like parrots, it's got to be preconceived it's got to be deliberate because if a 20% increase in particles were just neutrons that would be a 40% increase in gamma radiation and we don't need 40% more gamma radiation when we walk outside we don't need it so the implications the implications are are that we could be getting cold and that if you fly in, as an astronaut you could get more radiation and if you fly in an airplane you can get a dental x-ray or more and yeah, that's kind of scary or more why didn't they just say up up to five dental x-rays why can't they do that you can quantify it this is measurable you're talking about numbers why didn't you quantify it
And they don't want to quantify it. And, and you know, there's an article below it that says, NASA predicts next solar cycle will be lowest in 200 years. And then in parentheses, they put Dalton minimum levels. Well, that's not NASA saying Dalton minimum levels. That's Electroverse. And the implications. The implications, again, we're going to get the Dalton minimum. We're going to get cooler. And you say that as uh, over a million animals have cooked just in Australia alone. And nobody's talking about what's happening in Central and South America right now. It's hideous there. So, so it's important that the implications... We we know what's going on. You know what's going on. The sun is white hot. It's white hot because this cosmic rays, not only are they allowed in through a weak CME activity, but the actual total numbers of the background counts have gone up by a factor of 10. So the densities, we have 10 times the densities of cosmic rays just in the solar system. And then when the sun goes, goes flat on sunspots, there's nothing to push those away and around and out and scatter. There's no way to do that to cosmic rays. With a weak sun or a weak activity on the sun. So, what you have is a bunch of climate reporting, and when you go to research it yourself, you have a lot of censorship taking place. It's hard to find hot helium bubble images anymore. Google it, see what you get hot helium cloud, see what happens. And this is catastrophic. It's, it's triggered a methane, it's triggered nitrous oxide, it's triggered carbon dioxide, and it's set off a chain reaction of events, which the only thing that could turn it around really is a, a impact from an asteroid or a super eruption. The irradiance is going back down. It will be going back down, and but it will be doing it you'll see where they're focused into the sun and anything that's focused into the earth is going to be focused into the sun it's a gravitational thing and the sun is much stronger gravitational body than the earth could ever be so if earth is focusing in the helium then so is the sun big difference is in the sun's magnetic field these things ionize and collide at a much greater energies and much greater concentration and much greater speed thereby releasing even more radiation and secondary particles than were reported being created within our own magnetosphere here on earth